Hey guys, today is going to be a super fun day for making some pottery. I'm going to be doing a real simple project today, a bowl. This bowl right here. I've made this bowl in the past as you can see. It's been fired, turned out really good. Unfortunately, I've got a couple of complications that I want to correct by making a new bowl. My whole work desk here is a hot mess. <laughs> it's a disaster, but I think we got plenty of room to work on this thing. So at first glance, this original bowl that I made looks great. Unfortunately, I used some experimental temper with this and it contains some caliche. And over time that caliche does really bad things to your pottery, really bad things. So this was the original pinch pot that I made, testing out that temper. It fired very successful, but over time, as it got humid, you can see all these little pop outs now that I've got going on here. Ugh, it is crazy. Just all these little white specks here. And uh, that didn't make itself present until months later, unfortunately. I used that same temper in this bowl. So while it hasn't shown itself that caliche in here, there's a good chance it will down the road. So I want to remake this bowl and make it look really nice again. So I think we can hopefully experiment around and maybe make this a little bit darker on the inside and possibly the white a little bit whiter. I don't know. We'll see what'll happen. This is a replica of a bowl that was found at the ruins in the Tonto Basin area. Just a really beautiful bowl. So I'm really looking forward to remaking this thing. So let's go over the tools that I'm going to be using for this project. They're all really simple, hardly anything. I've got here this cutting edge that I'm going to be using. Probably only need it once or twice. We won't be doing too many coils. But this little tool will make short work of what we need it to do. <clears throat> I've also got here this gourd scraper. This is a really invaluable tool for helping sculpt and get the right shape that you need for your pottery. So this will be my primary tool right here. I got this particular one from Andy Ward. I'll put a link in the description below if you guys need one. You can purchase it from his site. And again, this is a really useful tool and I highly recommend it if you're gonna be doing this type of pottery. And lastly, you're gonna need a good old pookie. This is a special pookie that I've got here. It was actually molded straight from a six inch Tonto polychrome bowl. So I had a really fun time doing that. It was a privilege to be able to do it. And I've got a pretty authentic pookie right here, just for those six inch bowls. And the last thing I need, maybe it's the most important thing because I'm not gonna get anywhere without it, the clay. So I've got this big ball of clay. This should be enough to make the bowl. I've added some temper that I recently found and I had some good success with it. I found it around the Tonto Creek area and I've had some really good results with it. So I'm gonna use it here today. So let's dive straight into it, shall we? So it don't get much easier than this part. Just gonna take some of our clay. Make sure we got a good working material here. Just gonna flatten it out into a nice pancake shape. You'll feel it start to get as thin as you want. We got our pookie here and we'll just drop it right in and start to press this bad boy on. All right. So I'm just going around here feeling to make sure everything's the same thickness around. It's looking pretty good. Get my smoothing stone a little bit wet here and just kind of push that into the pookie. I'm gonna get the bottom all nice and smoothed out. Don't want to get too crazy with the water though. You know, big soupy mess. All right, now's a good time to start using the old gourd scraper. Just kind of bring this clay up. This 
This is gonna knock out all those little craters that formed. Give it a nice smooth. And you can see I've got all these little slash marks from the sharpness on this. Let's go over it again with our smoothing stone and get a little bit damp and just get rid of those. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. In fact, since this is all handmade, there's no way to get it completely perfect. A little bit of a really big dent going right there. There we go. Good enough for now. So now we'll go through with this tool and just cut this so it's nice and even. So we're ready to start on our first coil. I've got here my lump of clay. Boy, I think I've got too much though. Let's trim a little bit of that uh, off. And I really want to make sure those seams are pressed in really well. It's also a good time to check my thickness of the clay. That's looking pretty decent. I think I'll let this firm up a little bit more and then I'll go over it one more time. This is always a good step just to take your time and enjoy the hobby. You can get it as smooth as you want in this stage or you can just let it go as is. The nice thing with these is you don't have to be too perfect with them. Especially if you're replicating, you could look at the ones in the museum and some of the bowls look egg shaped or just wild. Nothing was perfect. It's all handmade and it all always looks beautiful. All those museum pieces. Well, that was a pretty productive day. We got the bowl all finished. 
I'm gonna let this thing sit out and harden up a bit more. I'm gonna come back maybe later on tonight or definitely tomorrow and start blocking in some of those white lines that are gonna go on the inside. So we'll be back for that. I wanna let it dry at least five hours, at least. Get it nice and leathery hard before I start applying that first layer for the slip. This has definitely come along pretty nice. So I've got here my red paint and we're just gonna slap some paint on this and get it all covered up. Let this thing dry out. Mm, this is beautiful, I just love this color. All right, so it looks like the bowl dried completely. Look how white that turns out once you get it all dried up. Really nice. I don't see any visible cracks in the drying process, so that's a good thing. All we gotta do now is use our organic paint and get this thing finished up and ready for firing. So let's get started on that. I've got here a bunch of yucca brushes that I failed to soak overnight to get these things prepped for this project today. Uh, usually you can store your yucca brushes indefinitely, they just harden out. You add a little bit of water to them and that softens them up and then peels them right off. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, I forgot to do that step. Um, but I do have some other yucca brushes that I've used in the past, so we're just going to have to make do with what we've got here. Yeah, I'll just uh, soak this guy for a little bit, get those bristles softened up a bit, and uh, be ready to go with this guy. And luckily though, the bristles are already exposed, so we're good to go with that. I've got here my secret sauce, that would be the mesquite sap right here. It's all been processed. I've got tons of this stuff. We got so many mesquite trees around here, it's easy to get throughout the year. I'd love to be able to try some yucca fruit one of these days, but I really don't have too many of those that grow around here, unfortunately. But someday. So as you can see, I got my mesquite sap mixed up to a really nice sticky sauce. Just a little bit of water to add to it. Mmm, it always smells so good. My yucca brush nice and lathered in with it. And you don't want to go too crazy and apply a super thick coat, but you also don't want to apply too thin of a coat. Just kind of that Goldilocks. Let's see if I can even get this on here for the camera to see. Oh boy. I like to kind of spread it around just so it doesn't clump up in one area. As you can see, I kind of saved the top for last. Uh, sometimes when you do this, you want to do it strategically. Just because it's pretty sticky, that sap, it will dry over time. Really hard to touch, which is good. But right now, it's in its sticky form. So it makes handling it a little bit difficult. It's easy to put your thumb right here. Very easy, actually. So I always like to leave the top for last. But you can work however you desire to do so. 
Just got these last little triangles to fill in here. Well, this was a pretty easy pattern to do. All we gotta do now is let this dry for a little bit and let's head on out to get this thing fired. Ah, oh, what a beautiful day to be out here in the desert. We're ready to get this bowl fired. So let's get started on this. So for this firing, I'm gonna dig a small shallow pit, really shallow. I think that'll do it. That looks good. Let's go get some wood and get this started. So I got all my pottery I'm gonna be firing up in this particular firing. You can see I got a little jar I'm dumping in here too. Let's get this started. So I'll add a little bit more wood to this pre-firing here. And this is just to warm things up and get a nice bed of hot coals going in there. This warm up fire sure went really quick. I didn't even get a chance to add some extra wood to it, but we'll just have to make do with it. Set my pottery furniture right in over here. Actually, we'll toss that over there. That's gonna be... I'll just flip this bowl upside down like so. So I put the jar right on top of the bowl there. I just need to collect a little bit more wood. Now I can start stacking this stuff. Well, this fire is really going underway. I've heard a couple of popping sounds and I'm really hoping that was the branches in there. I used a little bit thicker lumber this time to start this fire. Well, I guess only time will tell. We'll come back when this thing's all burned out. Well, we'll let this bowl cool down for a little bit longer. It's still kind of hot to touch. All right, well, let's get this cleaned up a little bit and see. Well, nothing like another successful firing, I say. No visible cracks on this. Has a lovely ding to it. Super lightweight. I'm really happy with how thick this bowl is this time. This is, we're right on target for this one. I, I love this. That is some beautiful red on the outside. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed the making of this bowl. If you did, please be sure to consider hitting that subscribe button and helping this channel grow. All right, my friends, till next time.